on your journey to financial independence, do you even know what that means? I'll tell you. So financial independence is where your passive income is more than your living expenses. So that means you don't have to actively work to survive. You can just work for the sake of it. Can you imagine that? I know, I can't either. But when I get there, guys, don't worry, I'll be here to update you. I'm here to share eight essential accounts that are helping me on my journey to financial independence. Hi guys, my name is Sissy and I'm a Ghana medical doctor working in the UK and I'm going to share 8 accounts that I feel like are very essential to have if you're on a journey of financial independence in the UK. The first account is a current account that I use for my salary that's incoming. So my salary for my main job comes into one account, so that's the incoming salary. So it's a current account because I found the current accounts were just easier, they have no charges, they're easy to set up, so that's why I have that. The first is a salary account, so that's an account that I have for my incoming salary. So I use a current account just because it was easier to set up. It had no fees at all it was easy to use so I have two of these actually so one of them is for all my main income that I get from my main job and I also have another one for my local companies because I don't separate I don't mix the money because it's easier to manage when you have separate like accounts for different things the next account I have is also for income that I get from other sources so for instance for my coaching service that I do so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for people if someone wants to talk to me about how to work as a doctor in the UK I have a separate account for that and that's because eventually when the money reaches a certain threshold then I'll have to start paying taxes on that amount as well and it's just easier for accountability to be able to have separate accounts for all the different like income and side hustles and all those kind of things. The next account that I have is for all my bills so that's for rent, GMC registration, gas, electric, council tax, Royal College membership, GMC membership, like so many things. So I have this all in one account and I have direct debit set up. So as soon as my salary comes, then I have to separate a portion of it that goes to this account. And on this account, it's going to be then deducted by direct debit. So I don't have to think about it. The next account is for grocery and home shopping. So this account is for obviously home expenses, for like food, toiletries and all that kind of thing. So this is an account that's managed by my partner because he is the one who deals with all that kind of side of things. So I think it's really important to have a separate account for all your spending. So you know that this account is for like spending for everything that you need for the home. The next account that I have is an emergency savings account. So this is ideally meant for three to six months of savings. So I've now gotten to the six months savings because like somehow some emergency comes up, something needs fixing, something's wrong with a car. So that's the thing with that. It's not as important for me to reach six months savings because I do have income protection. So if something was to happen to me and I'm not able to work, then obviously I would be able to get income from my policy. I made a whole video on that and I will link it here as well. If you don't have income protection, then you want to try and make up that six months of expenses so that if anything happens and you can't work, then somehow you're covered for until you find the next job or until you figure out like what next with your life. If you like this video up to this point, then please do give it a like. It really supports my channel and helps me on my journey to financial independence. <laughs> Thanks, guys. The next account is a specific savings. So I have specific savings accounts for everything. I have a specific savings account for Visa. So we're applying for we're due to apply for our visas later this year so there's a visa account for that i have a major exam coming up in september and that's about a thousand pounds that's on a separate account if we're saving for a car i'll have a separate account and it's so easy to open these accounts guys because if you already have like for instance on lloyd's or even hsbc you can just open a new account through your banking app if you already have an account with them it's really easy so it just helps to keep your money compartmentalized and then you're not ending up accidentally spending the money when actually it's meant for something really important another thing that can help you also to get even more money is that if you're changing your account so sometimes i do the current account switches so you just switch your account from one bank to another and they give you like 100 pounds free so if you want free 100 pounds then consider switching your current accounts the next account that i have is a lifetime isa so this is an account where the government gives you a 25 percent bonus of whatever money you put in you can only use this money for if you're going to retire and also if you're going to buy a house so this account is one that we have so both me and my partner have one because they give you 25 percent for per partner it's not per household and then we're using that to save for our deposit for when we buy a house so i'll link it below so you can go and check out all the eligibility criteria because i believe that you can only qualify for this for instance for buying the house bit if you don't own any property anywhere in the world and you're a first-time buyer you do get penalized if you withdraw the money for any other reason so this also is going to encourage you to put the money and keep it there and not get it out unnecessarily the next account that i have is a stocks and shares isa so both me and my partner have one because we are investing in different things to reduce like the overall risk for our family so in case my stocks and shares work out and his don't 
out in case his work out and maybe mine don't like just to diversify the risk a little bit so you get up to fifteen thousand pounds of tax free that you're allowed to invest in stocks and shares from the government so do make sure you use these guys and also it's much much better i think to have a stocks and shares ISA than to have a regular savings account because at least that way you're protected against inflation because with inflation what if you keep money in your savings account then it's, the value is just going to keep going down if you think you're going to save that for retirement so you'd rather put in an investment stocks and shares also and then be investing in their companies and there's a higher chance that you're going to get more money back out of the end and finally the last account is the junior stocks and shares isa so both of my girls have a junior stocks and shares isa where we're investing money for them and there was a calculation i saw from somewhere like if you start investing at least 100 pounds per month for your child from like birth like there's even a chance they can be a millionaire in their lifetime so i'm really doing this because there's two options either they get a really good rate of return and the money is really like a lot and helps them out in life or it doesn't and they don't know about it so i think it's a really good idea do consider it i initially had junior saver accounts but the interest rate was like 2.5 percent which is way lower than most interest rates that you get historically from stocks and shares so that's why i did that and i would encourage you to consider doing that for your kids as well so how are you going to save up enough money to fill up all these accounts well i made this video explaining just that here